And I think we both know what that are like. again. In 1987, a young actor gets the chance to enter the world of one of cinema's greatest and most influential directors. Today's drama on Radio 4, The Kubrick Test by Kerry Shale, is based on his own experiences. Say something, Pilgrim. Uh, uh, hello? Hey, Mike! Or how about... I'm afraid I'm tearing the wings off flies at the moment. Please speak after the insane laugh. (laughs) It's from my answering machine message. What do you think? I'm trying to contact the actor, Kerry Shale. (laughs) Nice one, Mike. Very good. Yes, this is the actor, Kerry Shale. Mr. Shale, I'm ringing for Stanley Kubrick, the director. (laughs) I'm sorry, who? I'm ringing on behalf of Stanley Kubrick. It's about providing the voice for the trailer of his new film about Vietnam, Full Metal Jacket. The trailer will go out in America and Canada on film and television. Would that be of interest? (laughs) Okay, this is getting old. Are you free to meet Mr. Kubrick at 11 this evening? I'm sorry, uh, who is this? My name is Leon. I work for Mr. Kubrick. Uh, The answer is yes, but how did you get my home phone number, Uh, uh, Leon? Good. I'll be in a green Land Rover. See you at 11. Tonight? That's correct. In three hours? That's correct. No, hold on. You're saying that Stanley Kubrick wants me to provide the voice for the trailer for his latest film? I have your address. See you then. Sarah Jane? <gasps> Babes, you're not going to believe this. I'm going to work for Stanley Kubrick. I'm going to work for Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> now then, Dimitri. You know how... We've always talked about the possibility of something going wrong with the bomb. The bomb, Dimitri. The hydrogen bomb. Well, now, what happened is, um, one of our base commanders, he had a sort of, well, he went a little funny in the head. You know, just a little funny. And, uh... He went and did a silly thing. Well, I'll tell you what he did. He ordered his planes to attack your country. Uh, Well, let me finish, Dimitri. (laughs) Let me finish, Dimitri. Well, listen, how do you think I feel about it? Can you imagine how I feel about it, Dimitri? (laughs) (laughs) Very good. Stanley told me that Peter Sellers improvised just about on every take. No kidding! And and Dr. Strangelove getting out of the wheelchair? Mein Führer, I can walk! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the idea of meeting the man who wrote and produced and directed all those unbelievable films is just... Oh, pinch me! I get it. And, and so you're saying that he's actually going to direct the trailer there at his actual manor house? Yes. I, I mean, who does that? Uh. To the best of my knowledge... Nobody! That's who! I mean... (laughs) Oh, this is just the best. I know the feeling. Really? (laughs) I don't think so. (laughs) After I saw Clockwork Orange, I turned to the friend I was with and said, I want to work for that man. A few years later, I found myself auditioning for Barry Lyndon. I was a basket case. Wait wait a sec, you were an actor, Leon? Trained at Lambda. Graduated 1969. No kidding! Well, that must have been tough not getting the part. Oh, no, I, I, I got the part. You were in it? You you were in Barry Lyndon? Oh, yes. When my agent called, I almost passed out. I played Lord Bullingdon, Ryan O'Neill's stepson. No! Oh, <laughs> you did? Oh, my... You, of course, I'm so sorry. It was 13 years ago. No, I feel awful, but you looked at... Well, you wore makeup. You wore tons of makeup. Yes, and I had hair. Tons of hair. <laughs> yeah. You were terrific. I, I love that scene. I have borne, as long as mortal could endure, the (laughs) ill treatment of the insolent Irish upstart whom you've taken into your bed. (laughs) It must have gotten you tons of work. So what have you been in since then? Not much, actually. I packed in the acting when I started working for Stanley. You packed it in to be Stanley Kubrick's driver? No, no, no. Uh, Stanley's driver's on holiday. I'm his, uh... Well, I do whatever needs doing. Well, what's it like? I mean, don't you miss acting? (sighs) Never. Working for Stanley is, well, it's the best thing is that I get to be a sort of fly on the wall. Sorry, uh, I haven't slept in 36 hours. That's okay. 
Now, I, I couldn't give up acting myself. I, I mean, one minute you're sitting at home feeling sorry for yourself, and you know, your agent hasn't wronged someone you know has just gotten the big part that you should have been up for, and you've had a fight with your girlfriend, and suddenly the phone rings, and it's Stanley Kubrick. I mean, I could never give up acting. Giving up was the easy part. <laughs> What's the hard part? Hello, Leon. You read me? Over. Oh. Affirmative, Stanley. I read you. Over. What's your ETA? Over. Not long, Stanley. Over. I need him here now, Leon. Right now. Over. Just turned into the lane. Ten minutes, Stanley. Over. Make it nine. Over and out. That was him. That was him. Oh. Wow. Coming soon to a theater near you. Wow. Gary, what can I say? That, that was astonishing. Are you sure, Stanley? Yeah, absolutely. I love it when an actor nails it on the first take. Well, hey, it was all in the writing. I just said the words. <laughs> but, no, but seriously, if you want me to try it again, I'd be happy to. No, no, no. Honestly, there, there's no need. If you don't mind me saying... No, actually, it sounds silly. No, go ahead, Stanley. Well, you remind me of the young Peter Sellers. Oh, gosh. Thanks, Stanley. That means a lot. Come out of the booth, Carrie. Let's grab a beer and a burger. I want to talk to you about a little project that I've been working on. Carrie, how much do you know about Napoleon? Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, sorry. So that was actually him. That was him. Your master's voice, huh? Was there some sort of emergency? No. Well, yes. Well, everything is an emergency. What do you mean? Stanley makes lists. Hey, I make lists. Drives my girlfriend nuts. Stanley's lists are different. Oh, no, I, I get it. I, I worked with the director at the Royal Court last year. The guy was a real perfectionist. Yeah, please don't use that word. Uh, okay. Especially not in front of Stanley. Okay. So, uh, so how did he choose me? Well, Stanley instructed me to compile demo cassettes for every single North American voice artist in the UK and Europe. Turns out there are 92 of you. He listened to every track on every one of those cassettes. Wow, it must have taken forever. Yeah, but gradually he whittled the number down to 50. From 50 he picked 20, from 20 he chose 10, then 5. He eventually found the top two. He listened again and again. Finally, he chose you. Ah! I'm working for Stanley Kubrick! Uh, working is, is not the word I'd use. Then what word would you use? Well, tonight is a kind of test. But when you called, you said, did I want a job? No, I, I said, were you interested in a job? Uh oh. Yeah, don't worry. Everything is a kind of test with Stanley. He's still testing me every hour, every day. <laughs> Does he often work like this? I mean, you know, after midnight? Stanley still operates on American time. How long has he been living in England? 25 years. Um, can I share something with you, Leon? Of course. My stomach uh, started acting up as soon as you called. I feel like Lord Bullingdon before that duel scene. Oh, by the way, that was the best fake puking I've ever seen. There are Rennies in the glove box. Help yourself. Thanks, but do you have something for the uh, other end? There's a modium in there, too, and a bottle of water. Oh, great. Keep the pack. I have plenty. Oh, uh, cheers. Uh, mm. So, uh, how does he actually direct? I mean, you know, what's his style? Does he give a lot of notes? I respond very well to notes. Here we are. Chillock Manor. It's Leon. I have Kerry Shale. Wow. Say, is it true that he won't drive his souped-up Porsche faster than 30 miles an hour? Uh, and that he drives it whilst wearing a football helmet. The press makes that all up. Yeah. These grounds are so huge. This whole place is such an enormous maze, I feel like I'll have to leave a trail of breadcrumbs. Shelley and the Shining, right? right? But the Overlook Hotel was haunted. Chillicbury Manor is a, it's a perfectly normal family home. <laughs> Where the man of the house stays up all night making the world's greatest films. And the world's greatest film trailers. <laughs> Feels like I've landed on the moon. How many rooms are there in the manor house? Lots and lots. Never counted. And uh, how many acres in the grounds? Over a thousand. More, I suppose. Oh, oh, what's that building there? That's where we're going. The stable block. 
offices, the cutting room, the kitchen with a microwave. A microwave? Stanley likes gadgets. Can you walk a bit faster? Ah, uh, sure. Well, what goes on in this bit? This is where we keep all the prints. Oh, the master prints of each film. Every print of every Kubrick film that gets distributed to any cinema in the world. Holy cow, who keeps track of all that? Me. Jeez, you really don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Having too much fun. <sighs> this is the door to the cutting room. The film is pretty much finished, but Stanley likes to tinker. Stanley Kubrick... Is, is through this door? Now, you still look a bit green around the gills. Uh, I feel a bit... <sighs> now, ignore the beard, ignore the eyes. He's just a funny little guy from the Bronx. That's what I told myself the first time. Did it work? No. I shouldn't have brought up the puking scene. You'll be fine. It's just a movie trailer. Ah, Carrie, you made it. I'm Stanley Cooper. Wow. I'm, uh, well, you know who I am. <laughs> I uh, don't know what to call you. Call me Stanley. I will. I definitely will call you Stanley. <laughs> A nice um, room, place you have here. I mean, the room is nice. It's, uh, is this where you, I uh, guess, this is where you, uh, you've been editing? No. Oh. I thought... No, no, I used a special video program on my office computer. But sometimes going back to the old equipment, it uh, gives me a fresh idea. Fresh uh, uh, vegetables are very good. My Sarah Jane, my girlfriend, she says I don't eat enough roughage, so... <laughs> you know, and it's very important to keep regular... My wife says the same thing. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, hey, hey there. Aww. <laughs> Sarah Jane and I, uh, me, we have... Um, Two cats. You mean two cats have you? Yes, right, good, very, that's a good one. <laughs> well, that's Polly. And over there, sleeping in that corner there, that's Jessica, and Teddy's around here somewhere. Oh. There are more. I love cats. What was it Nietzsche said, Carrie? Uh, huh? What do I care about the purring of one who cannot love? Like the cat. Cat, you don't think cats are capable of love? They care about only one thing at a time. Grooming, comfort, and in this case, come on, Polly. <laughs> Food. <laughs> they care very deeply. <clears throat> come, come on, Polly. Come on. Yes. Good girl. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So you'll you play chess, Carrie? Uh no, I well, yes, but I don't uh, not for years. Were you any good? Uh, well I I didn't get into it very uh deeply. <laughs> so bad, you're a reader? Uh, oh yes. So, watch the Super Bowl. Uh, sorry? I'm a Giants fan. Very gratifying result. Oh, yes, they had a fantastic season. It's big shoulder bag. What are you keeping that? This? Oh, uh, you know. Uh, no, tell me. Well, uh, pens, pencils, uh, markers, uh, vocal zones. What, what are those? Throat lozenges for when I'm dubbing crowd scenes that require a lot of yelling. That's, uh, that's interesting. Interesting. Huh? All right. <clears throat> What else? Uh, lip balm, uh, oh, spare set of house keys, <laughs> oh, uh, tissues, and a copy of Time Out. Uh, do you really want to know? Yeah, go on. Uh, oh, copy of Sight and Sound. Uh, oh, and my novel uh, and uh, my file of facts. Oh, it's a good product. I do not trust a man who doesn't write everything down. Do you write everything down? Oh, yes, everything. I write it all down. What's the novel? Uh, Deep Water. You know, it's an old Patricia Highsmith. Uh, terrific writer and a terrible anti Semite. What did you think of the halftime show? Huh? The salute to Hollywood. The what? I don't, I'm sorry. But the Super Bowl, gee, Carrie, come on, you're really not much of a chess player. Are we playing chess? The trailer's on your demo reel. They're bad films, but your voice, it contains... possibilities. <laughs> Have a seat, Carrie. Oh, thanks. Less water? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> oh, no, uh, tap water is fine. Are you kidding? It's not fine. You don't give tap water to your cats, do you? Well, yes. But don't. You want an aspirin before we start? Oh, I, I don't have a headache. You will. Uh, an aspirin a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> now, where did I... Oh, where did I... Ah. Ah. 
there so here you go hooray for hollywood <laughs> okay turn on that angle please you? okay now you'll be reading this right no just just wait a sec there okay what did you have for breakfast this morning sorry just something for level oh uh sure uh we had french toast actually you use white bread not brown uh yes An unsliced loaf you sliced it yourself uh yes well sarah jane did <laughs> Full metal jacket, carry shale, test, version one, take one. Uh, um, oh, okay. Full metal jacket, a Stanley Kubrick film, coming soon to a theater near you. Take two. To, um... Full metal jacket, a Stanley Kubrick film. Coming soon to a theater near you. W would you like me to... Take three. Um. Full Metal Jacket, a Stanley Kubrick film. Coming soon to a theater near you. Take four. Full Metal Jacket, a Stanley Kubrick film coming soon to a theater near you. Take five. Full Metal... Ten again. Sorry. Full Metal Jacket, a Stanley Kubrick film. Coming soon to a theater near you. Take 40. And this time... Uh, yes? Get it right. <clears throat> Full Metal Jacket, a Stanley Kubrick film. Coming soon to a theater near you. Take 41. <sighs> Full Metal Jacket, a Stanley Kubrick film. Coming soon to... Uh, oh, to... oh, Polly. <laughs> you little troublemaker. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> hey, settle down. That's a good girl. <laughs> good girl. Good girl. Carrie, you give me 40 takes of nothing. I I'm really sorry, Stanley, but I'm, I'm not sure what you want. Oh, no. Leon? Yes, Stanley? Get in here, now. Coming. Yes, Stanley? Polly was scratching very violently. Did you apply this month's flea treatment? It's, it's next on tonight's list, Stanley. I was just about to... And did you buy those melons? Leon, the melons, did you buy them? I'll get them as soon as the shop opens. You disappoint me. Sorry, Stanley. Here, careful. <sighs> Apply the flea treatment and then return Mr. Shale to London. <sighs> yes, Stanley. Don't come back without those melons. <sighs> You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Harry. What do you think? Better than John Wayne, right? Stanley wants you. Leon! Hey! You mean... You mean... Meet me outside your flat at 10 p.m. But, but last night he, he sent me home. Well, he, he... tonight he wants you back. Oh, that's great! I can't believe it! That's great! Thank you, thank you, thank you! See you at 10. Oh, no, uh... There's just one thing. I'm, I, I promised Sarah Jane that I, I would take her to Carrie, see... Carrie, you've got to ask yourself one question. What's that? Do you feel lucky? Excuse me? Well, do you? But it was probably just first-time nerves. I mean, who wouldn't be nervous, right? <laughs> uh, Leon? <clears throat> Almost there. You get any sleep since yesterday? Driving helps keep me awake. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. You, um, are you married, Leon, or in a relationship? I am. Why? <sighs> oh, no, no reason. To be honest, we're in the process of splitting up. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's tough on the kids. Working for Stanley requires a, a certain amount of... Ah! 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 What is it? Ah! My, my tooth. You want to pull over? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Ah, oh. oh, it's been like this for months. It's uh, off and on. It's an abscess. I, I haven't had time to get it seen to. When did you last visit a dentist? Oh, I don't know. Before I met Stanley. Oh, Leon, do you really want to 
read me. Over. I read you, Stanley. Over. Mm. Take 30. A Stanley Kubrick film, Full Metal Jacket, coming soon to a theater near you. Better. Oh, thank you. I was trying a sort of a... Do it. Better. Take 31. Oh. A Stanley Kubrick film, Full Metal Jacket, coming soon to a theater near you. Take 32. A Stanley Kubrick film, Full Metal Jacket, coming soon to a theater near you. That's no good. I'm, I'm sorry, Stanley. I was, I was trying to... No. You know, I meant the script. Needs another draft. Just give me a minute. Don't... Carrie, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, okay. I want the truth. Sounds serious. It is. Does Leon have a cold? I don't think so. Oh, come on. He's constantly popping paracetamol. There are empty blister packs all over his office. If he's spreading germs around this place, I want to know. I need to know, Carrie. I cannot afford to get sick. He doesn't have a cold. I'm not going to punish him. He'll have to wear a surgical mask to catch the microorganisms. It's just common sense. He doesn't have a cold, Stanley. He does. He doesn't. He has a toothache. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. That's what the paracetamol's for. He has a painful toothache. He, he has an excruciating toothache. Oh. Well, that's a relief. So, just... Stanley, um, please say no if this is inappropriate. But could I ask you a question? What sort of question? Concerning your films? I do not answer questions about the monolith. Hal was not gay, and I did not fake the moon landings. No, I, I mean, I, I know. This had better be a very good question. Uh, no, no, it's okay. I, uh, never mind. No, all right, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, what? No, in, in your films, I, I've noticed that there are always scenes that take place in bathrooms. Uh, important scenes that change the whole direction of the story. That's an observation. That's not a question. Uh, sorry, yes, but I, I was wondering, in Full Metal Jacket... Will there be, uh, you know, a bathroom scene? Well, that's a surprising question. Uh, thank you? Why can't you surprise me with a line reading? Uh, Stanley, a bit of an emergency. Can I interrupt? Yeah? The Indonesian newspaper ads, they, they just fax them through. When they finally comply? It's hard to tell. Should I... It's your responsibility, Leon. Uh -huh. Now get it right. Also, nail down the deal with the Swedish distributor. Mm -hmm. And I noticed cat vomit on the billiard room carpet. Take a Polaroid and clean it up. Okay. Drive Mr. Shale home. He's done. Hello? Kerry, it's Leon. Leon? Hi. It rang for a long time. Yeah, I just ran up the stairs. Good to hear from you. You went out? Uh, well, yes. Was I... that wise? Leon, it's been a week. I didn't know if I still had a job. So you went out? I met a friend for a drink. Well, you, you, you're, not, you're not drunk, are you? I had a couple pints. Brew some coffee. I'll pick you up at midnight. Leon! Midnight. Come, um, coming, Stanley. Oh, great. That's, that, that's just great. Yeah, I, I, I thought this time I was fired for sure. Well, so did I. Stanley listened to all the cassettes again. You still came out on top. Oh, that is so cool. I've got to go. Uh, Leon, Leon. What? Just to give you a heads up. Uh, tomorrow night is Sarah Jane's birthday, so I'm throwing a huge party for her. I've been planning it for months, so please, please, can you just stand me down for tomorrow? Stand you down? Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I'm not available tomorrow night. What am I supposed to tell Stanley? Well, uh, tell him the truth. Uh, tell him about the party. A, a birthday party isn't going to cut the mustard. Uh, well, I'm also dubbing crowd scenes on a horror film, uh, you know, tomorrow during the day. Which means? <laughs> Which means lots of blood-curdling screams, you know, like Shelley Duval in The Shining, so <laughs> my voice will be no good. <laughs> you took another job. Well, you haven't actually hired me. Leon, get in here now! I'll see you at midnight, but, but nothing tomorrow, right? I mean, shouldn't whoever's in charge, you know, call my agent? I mean, who is in charge, by the way? I handle the emoluments. You what? That's Stanley's word for actors' payments, emoluments. <laughs> and you handle them? It's part of my job. I'm the casting director for the film. You you cast Full Metal Jacket? Yeah. Wow, Leon, that's... I had no idea. Yeah. I mean, all those worldwide video auditions, 
you set them up? Yeah. Well, that's amazing. I mean, had you ever cast a film before? I mean, it's not something that you just do. I told Stanley I couldn't. Sure, sure you can, he said. Sure, no, I can't. I can't, Stanley. I, sure you can, Leon. Sure you can. So, how many, how many auditions did you organize exactly? Oh, thousands. Thousands and thousands and thousands. And how many speaking parts were there? Uh, Thirty. Yowzer! So how long did it take? Uh, it, it must have taken... Leon? Leon, do you read me? Over. Leon! Uh, oh, oh. Copy you, Stanley. Over. Leon, stop at that 24-hour gas station on the way in. Get one extra large bag of cat litter. The extra clumping variety. Write it down, Leon. Extra large, extra clumping. Over. Extra large. Extra clumping. Extra large. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Carrie Shale, FMJ. Trailer test. Version 7. Take 1. <clears throat> Full Metal Jacket. A Stanley Kubrick film based on the short timers by Gustav Hasford, which Newsweek called the best work of fiction about Vietnam in theaters now. Take two. Full Metal Jacket. A Stanley Kubrick film Full metal based jacket. on the short a Stanley timers Kubrick by Gustav film Hasford. Based the on best the short work of fiction about Vietnam. About Vietnam. The theaters theaters now. About Vietnam. Full Metal Jacket. A Stanley Kubrick which film called Full the Full Metal, metal Jacket. Fiction. About Vietnam. Vietnam. Stanley Kubrick about film Vietnam. based on the short timers by Gustav Hasford, which Newsweek. Hold it, hold it. I want something real. Something real. Like Take Twenty Four. Take 24 was real? It was. Well, could I hear it back? But it was not interesting. Oh. Take 27 was interesting. Great. Maybe if I could hear it? No. Why not? Well, it wasn't real. C could I? Uh, Stanley, could, it, could I try one more? Um, I think it'll surprise you. <sighs> okay. Take 29. <clears throat> Newsweek called it the best romantic comedy ever set in Vietnam. A light-hearted souffle, said Time magazine. Stanley Kubrick's full metal dinner jacket in theaters now. Surprise? <laughs> Follow me. Microwave salmon steak poached in milk. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. The result depends on the ratio of salmon to milk, the brand and type of milk, and the fat content of the salmon. Works best when it's cooked from frozen, not fresh. Eat, eat! Yeah. Mm. Mm, that's good. <laughs> Took me six weeks to get this right. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, chocolate ice cream. For dessert? Yeah, sure, great. Thank no, no, you. not dessert. To go with the salmon. Fish and chocolate? Mm hmm. Uh, uh, but, um. Food's food. That's how Napoleon used to eat. <laughs> you know what we need to wash this down? Bottled water and Redoxon. Those fizzy vitamin C things? Mm -hmm. oh. Here. There. Ah. Supports the immune system. You set them up and I'll knock them back, Stanley. <laughs> mm. You know, Carrie, you're a talented young man. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Stanley. But you're not a serious person. Pardon? You have a golden throat, Carrie. You're ambitious. But you're not serious. And this is a serious job. Um, Stanley, I, I was only trying to, to make... You were trying to entertain me. How old are you? I'm, I'm 30. You look younger and you act younger, but this is a man's work. I'm... I'm 
Stanley, geez, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. You ba- do not care deeply about what we're trying to achieve. How can you say that? I haven't had a, a decent night's sleep in weeks. My relationship has been in crisis since I took the first phone call. I think about nothing but making this trailer. Oh, you wanted to know about Full Metal Jacket. Okay. One of the leading roles is the drill instructor, the guy who turns these draftees into Marines. Okay? He yells at them. He calls them horrible names. He marches them until they drop. He turns their lives inside out. You follow me? Yes. Speak up, speak up. Now you use your golden throat. Yes. I cast an actor called Tim to play the drill instructor from video auditions. I never met him. Now Tim is an ex-Marine, but he's never been a drill instructor. So we flew out a real retired drill instructor to work with Tim. Okay? Uh Uh-huh. Little while before we do the shoot, Leon asks Tim to help him audition the extras who'll be in the background as soldiers to spend a few days yelling at them in character while Leon videos it. You with me? Yes. After maybe half an hour screaming into the extras' faces, Tim realizes that his throat's getting sore, that he might lose his voice if he keeps it up. He's just helping Leon test the extras, he says. He wants to have healthy vocal cords for when we start the actual shooting. You understand? Yeah. What would you do in that situation, Carrie, if you were Tim? Well, I I guess I'd say to Leon, uh, you've got this real drill instructor here. Why not use him for the test? Correct. That is exactly what you would say. And that's exactly what Tim said. So Leon agrees to use this guy, the real guy, huh? Lee, to yell at the extras. Tim goes back to his hotel and Lee steps in in front of the camera and he starts screaming. He screams till his throat is raw and bleeding, and the extras are terrified and they're crying real tears. And then he screams at them some more. He goes on screaming all day. He goes on until his voice gives out completely. Now tell me why I am telling you this story. I wish I could. Lee knew that I was going to see that video test. So... So I fired Tim and I gave the part to Lee. You... But why? Because he cared more than Tim did. But he's not an actor. Well, he is now. I even gave him a bathroom scene. But what about Tim? What did you give him? I gave him a plane ticket. Straight side. Stanley, are you firing me? Later on, I invited Tim back for a single scene as a different character. Did he come back? Of course he came back. Ask me, Carrie, how much he cared the second time. How much did he care the second time? He cared very much. Please don't fire me. I just did. Sarah Jane's birthday party bash, you're very late. Harry, it's Leon, open the door please. Uh, to whom am I speaking? It's Leon, open the door. Hey, Leon! <laughs> Come on up, pilgrim! <laughs> you're not answering your phone. Leon, we got Canadian beer! Have you been drinking? Of course, it's party time! <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, man. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Stanley. Stanley what? Uh, Stanley. Yeah? 
Stanley needs you, now. Oh, come on, he fired me. Yeah, well, he rehired you, let's go. No, brother, come on, Leon, there's no way I'm, no, I can't. Why can't you? Because Sarah Jane would murder me with an ax. Oh, don't be silly. Hey, Leon, look, I told you it's her birthday party. All our friends are here. There's gonna be a cake with, with trick candles you can't blow out and, and a toast by me. I can't just up and leave. <laughs> She'll understand. It's Stanley Kubrick. Don't mention that name. She hates it. I'm sure that's not true. Well, the last time I mentioned Stanley, she threw a cat bowl at my head. A plastic cat bowl? A ceramic cat bowl. Oh. Yeah, so give me a break, just for a night. I'm afraid I can't do that, Kerry. Well, what about my voice? Your voice is fine. It's, are you nuts? I spent all day screaming my ass off. There are slugs in the water supply. We're all gonna die. I had one scene where a slug crawled down my throat. I got a slug on my throat. I told Stanley your voice would be tired. He's fine about it. How can the world's biggest perfectionist be fine about it? Because it's just a test. I can't, Leon. I, I... I can't go through that again! We're getting close. No! I can feel it. Please leave. I'll be downstairs. She'll forgive you. She won't. You've been together, what? Five years? It only gets truly desperate after seven or eight. It's over. She'll forgive you when she sees the film. It's over, Leon. I left my girlfriend for Stanley Kubrick. Sounds like a headline in the news of the world. Leon, you read me? Over. Roger, Stanley, over. Have you got Carrie Shale? We need to get there. Sorry, Stanley. Repeat. Over. Have you got Carrie Shale? Carrie Shale. Carrie Shale. Let me come in. <laughs> <laughs> Not by the hair on your chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff <laughs> and I'll blow your house in. Take one. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Take three. Take four. Stop it! Take five. Stop it! Take six. Take seven. Take eight. No! 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 <laughs> Here's Stanley. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. Delivery of one voiceover artist as per your orders, Stanley. Uh, I, I have that colour timing to do. Stay. Carry sit. Uh... Leon, you chased the uh, the printed Lolita for Brussels? Uh, I sent it at five o'clock. The 2001 laser disc transfer for Japan? There's a copy on your desk. The final credit sequence? Amended. The low-fat cat biscuit? Ah. No, Stanley, I, I, um, ah. Uh, oh, Leon. I'll get it in the morning, I, I promise, Stanley. I... How many times? Roll up your sleeve. Stanley, please. Write it on your arm. <sighs> okay. Stanley, if you don't mind me... What's the matter with your voice? Huh? Well, uh, you know, an actor's life. Work all day, party all night. <laughs> so, uh... Carrie. No, but I, I thought you... Leon? Uh, uh... You thought, Leon, what? Told you about my voice. You said it would be fine. I mean, <laughs> it's just a test, right? Get out of my sight. Uh, I may have handled that badly. You think? I'm sorry. Stanley says... Shut up. 
If I had a cat ball, you'd be a dead man. I'm sorry. You're a fly on the wall, all right. And Stanley's a spider. How many times has he torn off your wings? How many times has he bitten off your head? It's awful. Why do you let him do it? Oh. Pull in here. Where? The petrol station. But we have enough to make it to London. Pull in now! <laughs> Are you in there, Kerry? Open the door, please, Kerry. There was this huge decommissioned gas works in East London used to be the largest gas works in Europe. Stanley decided to turn it into Vietnam. He imported 200 palm trees from Spain, thousands of plastic plants from Hong Kong. He burned mountains of tires, hundreds of mountains soaked in oil. The stench was unbelievable. The shoot took over a year, a million feet of film. Lee almost died in a car crash. The art director had a nervous breakdown. Both Stanley's parents died during the shoot. <sighs> well, things haven't worked out exactly the way I imagined they would. But it seems to me that the reason why I let him do it, it's the price I pay for the experience. It's a, it's a vicarious experience, but if you go with it and you work with it, you learn from it. And then Stanley will say, oh no, I, I changed my mind and you're, <laughs> you're starting all over again. But what difference does it make to me if he changes his mind, if, if, he, if he pulls off my wings? I'm at the service of him because he's at the service of his storytelling, at the service of his art. And the thing is, is I, I want, I want to be with Stanley, work for Stanley, do all this stuff. I just want to. He's the most original filmmaker of the 20th century. And it's an honor to be able to work for him, yes. Yeah, an honor. Even if it destroys you. Nah, I can't give up the journey. <laughs> but it's not your journey. His journey has become my journey. Well, what if, what if he dies? What then? The films would still be there. The journey would continue. It's your life, Leon, not a movie. Well, that's not the way I see it. Are you happy, Leon, living like this? Sure, yeah, of course. Well, Stanley called. I told him you were in the toilet throwing up. He was pleased. He said it shows you care. He's changed his mind. He wants me to bring you back right now. His exact words were, tell Kerry it's time to begin. In Vietnam, the wind doesn't blow. It sucks. <laughs> Full Metal Jacket, the new film from Stanley Kubrick, at a theater near you, now. In The Kubrick Test by Carrie Scheel, Carrie played himself, Leon by Robert Ems and Kubrick by Henry Goodman. It was produced and directed by Boz Temple Morris and is a Holy Mountain production for BBC Radio 4.